Steve, I think you were involved in some of these trials, the, these landmark trials of rifaximin um, and in combination with lactulose. Can you give us an idea how efficacious is that combination um, in, in patients with overt hepatic encephalopathy, preventing recurrence, preventing hospitalization, things like that? It's a great question, Arun, and very, very critical to the appropriate management of these sick patients. <clears throat> First of all, um, this uh, rifaximin's approved usage is not actually what we've t discussed yet. It is not approved at this point for treatment of acute overt encephalopathy. Now at Northwestern, when a patient has overt encephalopathy, we treat them with the precipitating factor correction and lactulose, the ammonia reducing agent. And when the patient is starting to get better, we start them on rifaximin in the hospital, every patient, but it's not yet for treatment of the overt episode. It's for prevention of recurrence. The pivotal trials that led to the approval of rifaximin in this disease space were specifically in patients that had had multiple bouts of encephalopathy, at least two within six months of presentation, and were at their baseline when the study began. And the idea was not to treat acute overt HEE because they were at their baseline. It was to prevent recurrence in a high-risk population. And the study was a placebo-controlled study where patients received rifaximin versus placebo for 24 weeks in this high-risk population. Now, it turned out that about 90% of the patients in both groups were also on lactulose. So essentially, this was a study that looked at lactulose and rifaximin versus lactulose alone with placebo for prevention of recurrence in high-risk patients. And from the side effect part, which you were just discussing, rifaximin really did not have a side effect difference from placebo really in anything of note during this six-month placebo-controlled trial. And this is a testimony to the safety of the product used over the long term in this patient population. And that includes C. diff. There were two, patient, two cases of C. diff reported in the study in the rifaximin group, but both patients had other causes of C. diff. Both patients were treated successfully for C. diff and were maintained on the rifaximin throughout the course of their C. diff and resolved it. Uh, it's not my knowledge that really anybody believes that C. diff is related to rifaximin. So in our sick patient population, this is a very safe product. And one other thing, since it's so minimally absorbed, you don't need to have any dose reductions or dose considerations in either patients with liver failure, which our patients have, or renal failure, which many of our patients also have. So that's actually a, an important consideration for this product when being used by healthcare practitioners. And we can talk more about the efficacy when, whenever uh, you know, we get to that part. Sure, and so you would feel comfortable using rifaximin in your sickest patients, your child's PUC, cirrhotics, or very high MELD patients, or does that worry you at all? That's a great question too. You know, in the pivotal study, the highest MELD score, I believe it was up through 24. I believe patients with MELD score of 25 and higher were excluded. So there weren't many child C cirrhotics in the study. And in fact, rifaximin does have a slightly increased absorption in patients with very, very advanced liver disease. And yet, in practice, we use it all the time in patients that are child C for prevention of recurrence. And I've not personally experienced an issue with it, nor have I heard anyone else either, nor have I seen any literature to the effect that there have been any clinical implications of using rifaximin in patients with child C. What about you, Arun or Elliot? Have you seen yeah, any issues? No, that's my experience as well. And it's a, it's a question that I sometimes get asked. And the way I usually answer it is that in every transplant center I know of, those sickest patients are usually on rifaximin. Almost all of them have HE, and I'm not aware of anyone reporting an adverse outcome related to it um, in, based on severity of, of liver impairment. Elliot, do you? 
Yeah, I have to agree. You know, there's, there's the population enlo enrolled in clinical trials that's obviously different from those that we see in the real world, but we have adequate real world studies of uh, rifaximin and adequate real world experience to confirm that, in fact, when we've extrapolated those results to the sickest possible patients, uh, it remains safe and effective.